deep in a forest, a mysterious girl running for her life while serenaded by terrifying sounds falls into a tiger pit, while a cloaked figure watches from the edge of the pit. In the present day, Jessica Roberts, a reporter from Star Ledger, meets with a few teachers in Whiskeyock High School regarding the plane crash their female team, the Yellow Jackets, were involved in, while en route to the Nationals back in 1996. But none of them seemed to know what happened. Afterward, she contacts Shauna, one of the survivors, and asks about the same thing. However, Shauna doesn't give her much to go on. Meanwhile, Natalie, also one of the Yellow Jacket survivors, has just come out of rehab for a drinking and smoking addiction and has been having constant recollections of the girl in the tiger pit being eaten by a group of totally cloaked individuals. After her meeting with Jessica Roberts, Shauna reaches out to Taisa, also one of the Yellow Jacket survivors who's now running for state senate, and warns her about the reporter so the secret of what they'd done in the wilderness won't come out. Back in 1996, the Yellow Jackets board the plane alongside the coach, his two kids, and the assistant coach, only to crash halfway. Sometime later, a cloaked group of cannibals is revealed, and as they eat their meal, one of them pulls off their face covering, revealing herself as young Misty, also one of the Yellow Jacket survivors. The plane crashes in the Ontario wilderness, killing a few of them and injuring others. Among the dead is their head coach. The assistant coach loses a limb because of the accident, but the girls find him alongside Travis and Javi, the head coach's sons, and Misty cleans up their wounds. In the present day, Shauna has a minor car accident with a stranger called Adam, who she exchanges contact info with after having a conversation. Meanwhile, Natalie, who'd received a postcard carrying an occult symbol from the Ontario wilderness, visits Misty with a rifle because she thinks she's behind it. However, Misty reveals she also got one, and they both assume one of them must have talked. During their conversation, Misty shows Natalie her findings on other survivors, including Travis's ID. Still in love with Travis after all these years, Natalie tries to reach him on the number on his ID, but to no avail. At Shauna's home, she discovers a text on Jeff's phone that suggests an affair. The next morning, Natalie's car malfunctions as she tries to look for Travis, and Misty offers to drive her. Back in the wilderness, Misty overhears two girls praising her survival skills. Attention hungry and intent on preserving her relevance, she destroys the black box when she finds it, and with it, their hope for a rescue. When Natalie discovers Misty had tampered with her car, she confronts her and learns Misty did it because she wouldn't have been allowed to tag along if she'd asked nicely. They then go on and break into Travis's house and search for the place when they find no one at home. Misty then finds a receipt that could lead them to Travis's workplace as well as a note, but they get arrested for breaking and entering. Misty uses her phone call to contact Kevin Tan, a cop who was Natalie's best friend back in high school, and he gets them out. Afterward, they head over to Travis's workplace. Meanwhile, Shauna tracks Jeff to a hotel where she intends to find out about his supposed affair. At the hotel, while having a drink with Adam, who had coincidentally met her at the hotel bar, Shauna spots Jeff leaving the hotel with a lady, confirming her suspicion. Back in the wilderness, the stranded group comes across a house up on a hill. Lottie, who's been behaving weird since she ran out of meds for her schizophrenia, tells Taisa she finds the house disturbing, but they go in regardless. Later that night, as the girls sleep, Taisa wakes to the sound of creaking in the attic. So she goes up and finds Lottie staring at a skeleton chained to a chair with a mysterious symbol inscribed on the floor next to it. The same symbol on the cards they received in the present. Back in the present, Natalie and Misty find Travis hanging from the roof at his workplace and are forced to leave when the cops show up. As they drive away, they assume he committed suicide, but Misty gives Natalie the note she'd taken from Travis's house, and it says that Natalie was right. 
Natalie tells Misty she doesn't know what Travis is referring to, but she doesn't believe he killed himself. Back in the wilderness, Coach Scott teaches the kids to hunt with a rifle and sends Natalie and Travis to go find food since they have better aim than the rest of the team. In the present, Natalie asks Kevin to help discover what happened to Travis, and he agrees, but unknown to them, they're being watched by Misty and Jessica. When Natalie then discovers Misty's been following her, she's pissed and confronts her about it. Misty, in turn, confronts Jessica for doing the same thing and tells her to back off, while Shauna and Adam grow closer and more intimate. Back in the forest, Lottie finds the occult symbol on a tree, while Jackie finds a plane, which they assume belongs to the dead man in the attic. Laura Lee, who has little experience flying planes, tries to fly it and almost kills Van and Jackie. When the plane gets caught up in the trees of the wilderness, Lottie takes it as a sign that the trees never wanted the dead man to leave. In the present, feeling left out from the rest, Misty calls Shauna and tells her Travis is dead. Upon learning that Travis's toxicology report is clean, Natalie rules out the possibility of suicide. However, she intends to know more about his death report, so she asks Misty to help hack Kevin's email for Travis's death report, since Kevin has declined to share any more information. At Thaisa's home, she's roused by her dog's agitation, and when she looks out the window, spots a wolf. But it appears to only be a hallucination. However, she finds the word spill written with paint on their door. Later that evening, she finds the same color of paint under her son's bed, and when she asks him for an explanation, gets told the person responsible is a woman who her son had spotted earlier standing next to the tree outside his window. Back in the past, the girls have a seance for fun, but things turn dark as Lottie gets seemingly possessed and talks about a spirit needing blood. In the present, Misty successfully gets Travis's death report and discovers the mysterious wilderness symbol formed by drops of candle wax distributed across pictures of his corpse. When Natalie then invites Thaisa to see what they found, they receive a text from an unknown number requesting cash to keep the secret of what they did back in the wilderness. Though Misty's not present at the moment, she's planted a hidden camera in Natalie's house and listens in on them. Lottie's mental or supernatural issues are traced back to when, as a young child, she saved her parents from getting their car crushed by a truck. On getting home, her mom believes Lottie has psychic abilities. Years later, in the wilderness, Lottie alone sees the specter of a deer with bloody antlers, while foraging for food with the girls. When in the present, Shauna arrives at Natalie's house, she learns of the postcard Natalie, Thaisa, and Misty received. But she didn't get any herself. They connect the postcards to the blackmailer and decide to find him by tracking the money they'll send to him. Back in the past, Shauna, who is pregnant, is hell-bent on hiding the identity of the person responsible from Jackie, since it's Jackie's boyfriend, Jeff. Like a prophecy, Lottie's vision about the deer comes true, as Natalie and Travis bring in the same deer to camp. However, it's inedible, as it's been infested with maggots. In the present, Misty kidnaps Jessica, who refused to back away from asking questions. Conversely, the blackmailer reaches out to Natalie and Thaisa, dropping a venue in time for the money. As Thaisa cleans herself hurriedly to meet up with the girls for the drop-off, a bite mark shown on her arm and dirt on her teeth, revealing that Thaisa sleepwalks and eats dirt while doing that, and that she is the woman her son had seen outside. In the wilderness, a small group of girls pack up to search for help. Before they leave, Lottie, having had a nightmare, gifts Van a piece of the deer's bone. As most of the girls are out, a young Shauna finally tells Jackie about her pregnancy, but lies about who's responsible. Meanwhile, in the present, the kidnapped Jessica tells Misty that Thaisa had sent her to test the girl's ability to keep their secret, as its revelation could hamper her political hopes. Conversely, Shauna, Natalie, and Thaisa find the blackmailer, 
but cannot apprehend him. When Shauna returns home, she finds Adam waiting, and they make out as no one's around. However, Shauna has to hide Adam in her closet when Jeff comes home unexpectedly. Back in the past, Thaisa screws up the first watch when she falls asleep and sleepwalks onto a tree. As a result, a pack of wolves easily infiltrates the camp and attacks the girls. Though they're able to repel the attack, Van gets seriously injured. With Van presumed dead, the girls try to give her a befitting burial by cremation, but she regains consciousness as the cremation starts. When they get back to the cabin, they clean and stitch her wounds. In the present, Shauna's daughter Callie finds out about Adam and confronts her about it. While monitoring Natalie through the hidden camera, Misty hurries over to stop her from relapsing. When Natalie then finds out about the hidden camera, she's furious. Before then, Jessica had told Misty that Travis's account had been cleared and closed after his death. So Misty lets Natalie know as they argue. Sometime later, Natalie contacts a female banker named Susie to help her find the person responsible for clearing and closing Travis's account. Back in the wilderness, Laura Lee, fed up with recent events, attempts to fly the dead man's plane in search of help. But the plane explodes mid-air, killing her and their hopes of rescue. After seeing glitters in her closet, Shauna's reminded of the blackmailer who'd run through a boutique and picked up some glitter while trying to escape them. Since Adam had been in the closet, he becomes her prime suspect. She also discovers that her journals containing details of her time in the wilderness are missing, so she heads over to his house and confronts him. When he denies her allegation, things get heated, and she stabs and kills him. In the wilderness, Jackie suggests they have a party, and the girls go along with it. The party in the wilderness gets weird because the mushrooms Misty reserved for Scott were used in the general soup. Under the influence of the mushrooms, and following Lottie's lead, Shauna almost kills Travis, but is stopped by Natalie and Jackie. The following day, Travis and Natalie discover Hobby's nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, in the present day, Shauna returns home to find not just that her journals are safe, but that her husband was the blackmailer all along. Jeff tells her he blackmailed them because he needed money to settle his score with a loan shark. Then, she tells him about the dead Adam and reveals she's been having an affair with him. To make matters worse, she'd also wrongly suspected her husband of cheating on her. Though he's read the journals, Jeff still loves Shauna and they agree to pin the blackmailing crime on Adam and get rid of the body. Shauna and the girls take the matter into their hands and Natalie brings Misty in to help dispose of Adam's body. In the wilderness, after the events of the party, a bear walks in on the girls, kneels before Lottie, and is stabbed to death, providing food. Just as Lottie had envisioned, for the girls who are already on the verge of starvation, while eating, Van acknowledges Lottie's psychic abilities, and they say a new prayer to the forces Lottie believes are out there. As they eat, Shauna and Jackie get into a heated argument, dredging up the horrible events of the previous night, and the fact that Shauna had slept with Jeff, with Jackie having read her journal earlier. However, during the argument, the girls side with Shauna and have Jackie leave the house. In the present day, after telling Jessica about their experience in the wilderness, Misty pretends to let her go. Unknown to Jessica, Misty's poisoned her cigarettes, so she dies while smoking and driving away. Later that night, as Thaisa celebrates winning the election, Simone, her wife, finds a secret room in their house and to her horror, stumbles across the head of their dog, its heart, and their son's mutilated toy before the occult wilderness symbol drawn in blood. Back in 1996, the girls wake up the following morning to discover it had suddenly snowed overnight and that Jackie has frozen to death outside. In the present, Natalie's inability to get answers that suggest Travis was murdered causes her to believe he'd committed suicide. This depresses her, and as she's about to kill herself, a group of people wearing the mysterious symbol drag her away. Conversely, Susie leaves a voicemail for her, 
saying she's found who cleared Travis's account, and asks who Lottie Matthews is. And let the darkness set us free.